Are you a fan of classic movies that blend humor, suspense, and heartfelt moments? There's a gem from 1946 that perfectly encapsulates all these elements. Imagine a story where a war veteran, fresh from battle, finds himself caught up in a gripping murder mystery. The twists and turns in this film will keep you glued to your seat. Have you ever had a memorable movie watching experience? Maybe it was sharing a bowl of popcorn with loved ones or feeling a sudden jolt of realization during a pivotal scene. If so, we'd love to hear your stories. In this particular film, expect surprises at every corner, making it a truly unique cinematic journey. And don't worry, we'll be diving into some fascinating facts about it as well. So, if you're ready for a mix of laughter, suspense, and heartfelt moments, this movie is for you. Get ready to be enthralled by a classic tale that stands the test of time. In 1946, a noir film emerged onto the cinematic stage, captivating audiences with its gripping narrative and compelling characters. Picture this a post-World War II era where the world grappled with the aftermath of conflict and society sought solace in the silver screen. This movie, known for its detailed storytelling and moody cinematography, left a lasting impression on classic noir. A suspenseful tale of mystery and intrigue unfolded against the backdrop of a world in transition, reflecting the uncertainties of the time. The storyline, filled with details, revolves around a discharged military officer accused of a crime he didn't commit, throwing him into a labyrinth of deception and danger. This film is not merely a cinematic piece. It's a testament to the era's storytelling and the resilience of narratives. The characters, each with their own motivations and secrets, connect with the audience, creating a vivid tapestry of suspense and drama. The movie's impact surpassed its initial release, leaving a lasting mark on the noir genre. As audiences immerse themselves in the unfolding drama, it became more than just a movie. It became a captivating journey into the complexities of human nature and the shadows that lurk beneath seemingly ordinary lives. The era's uncertainties are reflected in the film's characters and plot, making it a noteworthy piece of cinematic history. In conclusion, this noir gem stands as a cinematic reflection of its time, exploring human nature in the post-war era. In a pivotal scene of the film, following the intense confrontation between the protagonist and two assailants, keen-eyed viewers may notice a seemingly unusual detail. One of the thugs, dealing with a broken foot, immerses it in a round tub. This unplanned addition was a consequence of an on-set incident. The actor had genuinely broken his foot during the filming of the fight. Without consulting the scriptwriter, the director made an impromptu decision to rewrite the scene, incorporating the real-life injury into the character's narrative. The genesis of this production revolves around a paramount star of his time. Called back into army service, the actor's absence left the studio in a quandary. Desperate to have a film ready for release during his service, the studio hastily fast-tracked it as a showcase for their leading actor. The urgency to feature him pushed the production team into swift action, ensuring a movie starring the studio's prized actor would be available for the audience despite uncertain return dates. Notably, one of the ensemble cast members had a varied career. Besides an early vocation as an ordained minister, this actor portrayed clergymen on both television and film. On TV, they appeared in The Lone Ranger and Crossroads, while on the big screen, they took on roles in The Member of the Wedding and Washington Story. In the behind-the-scenes anecdotes of the production, these details offer a glimpse into the creative decisions, challenges, and strategic maneuvers that shaped the film, giving it a distinctive edge. Such behind-the-scenes elements, often hidden from the audience, become threads in the fabric of the cinematic experience. In The Blue Dahlia, Hugh Beaumont, born to Ethel Adaline Whitney and Edward H. Beaumont, had a rare blood type. Some sources wrongly mention Harold J. Stone in an uncredited role. However, he wasn't part of the film due to his stage commitments in New York. The movie features cars with B stickers on the windshield, reflecting wartime gasoline rationing due to rubber shortages caused by Japanese occupation in Southeast Asia. B stickers entitled holders to 8 gallons of gas weekly. In the middle of the 19s, there were some interesting stories about actors in Hollywood. One actor, Alan Ladd, made a big impact on the film world back then. When he passed away unexpectedly, people wondered about the roles he might have played, like the one Steve McQueen had in Nevada Smith in 1966. Ladd seemed keen to take on similar roles, showing his dedication to acting. At the same time, another actor named Hugh Beaumont was also facing challenges in Hollywood. In 1951, a movie called The Sins of Sarah Ferry ran into trouble because it was too similar to another film called Double Indemnity. They couldn't get permission to film in certain places, so the project fell through, even though it had a great cast. 
Meanwhile, William Bendix, another actor, not only acted well, but also helped shape the words spoken in a Broadway play called The Time of Your Life. The playwright, William Saroyan, recognized Bendix's help, showing that Bendix had many talents. These stories from the past show how Hollywood had its ups and downs. Actors faced challenges, but they also showed their dedication and talents in different ways. Amidst the pressures of completing the screenplay for the 1946 movie, Raymond Chandler faced a daunting task. Paramount's urgent demands coupled with the challenge of crafting a new ending threw him into a bout of writer's block. In a move to meet the deadline, he purportedly proposed to work under the influence, securing exceptional privileges from the studio in exchange. Despite skepticism surrounding his alleged drunkenness, Chandler delivered the script on time, securing his place in the production history of The Blue Dahlia. Throughout Hollywood's history, certain actors have left an undeniable mark on the silver screen. One such actor, recognized for his roles in beloved classics like Gone with the Wind and It's a Wonderful Life, contributed to the success of two Oscar-winning Best Pictures and appeared in eight other nominated films. Another actor, whose talent impressed producer Cheryl Walker, graced the stage in six of her productions during the late 1930s. Despite achieving fame, another actor, unfortunately, faced personal struggles, including a suicide attempt in 1962 and a fatal overdose in 1964, shrouded in mystery by the studio. These actors played significant roles in shaping the movie, The Blue Dahlia, adding depth and richness to its story. In a 1952 film, a leading man faced an unusual punishment keelhauling. This marked a rare occurrence in Hollywood, adding a unique layer to the actor's experiences. In another instance, during a radio broadcast within a particular film, a suspect's description cleverly omitted the mention of height, possibly to spare embarrassment for the star, who stood at a modest 5'6". Betty Hutton and Noel Neal shared the screen in four films, enhancing the variety of their on-screen experiences. These anecdotes offer glimpses into the actors' lives, creating additional interest for those familiar with the context. Crafting a narrative that delves into the varied experiences of actors adds depth and intrigue to the entertainment industry. It's fascinating to uncover these behind-the-scenes details, providing a different perspective for enthusiasts of the era. In Dad Newell's portrayal by Will Wright, his character claimed to be 57 years old, but in reality he was 52, born in Wedding 1894. Wright, a seasoned character actor, later became a familiar face on popular TV shows during the 1950s and early 60s, Raymond Chandler, known for his detective novels, wrote his first solo screenplay with no collaborators for The Blue Dahlia. Elizabeth Short, nicknamed The Black Dahlia, received the moniker from a Long Beach bartender who misunderstood the film's title. Short embraced the name, adding a flower to her hair. Tragically, she was murdered in 1947, and local newspapers named the case The Black Dahlia in a macabre reference to the film. Unlike the movie, the real-life Short murder case remains unsolved. The events surrounding Dad Newell's age, Raymond Chandler's solo screenplay, and the tragic tale of Elizabeth Short intricately weave into the Blue Dahlia's narrative, reflecting the convergence of fiction and reality during that era.